Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Grounded. So we're kind of winding down our coverage on the game here. Uh, I wanted to do one last uh, couple videos here, or maybe a few more videos on the things I really like about Grounded now that it full release uh, happened on September 27th of this year. The game was an early uh, release or early access for a little over two years. Now that kind of pushed a lot of what they wanted to do um, out in front, and a lot of the stuff that they wanted to do didn't get done. But we're not going to worry about all that stuff uh, in this video. Right now, we're going to look at uh, 10 positive things that I really enjoyed about Grounded in my time of playing it uh, from July of last year up until uh, right now. So I'm going to kind of cover the idea of the game, right? So you guys know if you're a 90s kid, uh, born in the 80s or something like that, or even if you're a new kid and you enjoyed the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids uh, movies, that's kind of what this game is basically uh, based about. Being a kid, being shrunken down, now, obviously, it's a different story, but being shrunken down into a backyard environment where you kind of have to survive, you're being thrown into the environment that is dominated by insects, and they are doing their best to survive and keep their ecosystem going, and you have just kind of uh, come into it on your own here, and you have to try to survive uh, with them. So, I really love the idea of the game. I think it could have been a lot better, but overall... I really enjoy the aspect of a survival game. A lot of survival games are kind of similar. You're placed in some place uh, on an island or in a forest or something like that. And uh, it can kind of get tedious doing the same thing overall. Uh, but this game really kind of pushed the boundaries a little bit on survival games uh, in this aspect of it being, being a shrunken down kid in a backyard full of insects. So kind of similar to, like I said, the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids uh, movies. And I really love that aspect of it. So... Jumping back into the other one that I was talking about before we got uh, attacked there was the insects themselves. There are so many insects here. You have aphids, you have weevils, you have uh, the orb weaver junior that you just saw that attacked us. Now that's a different one uh, from later in the game, but the different spiders and everything. When you first jump into this game, you kind of have no idea what you can do and what you can't do. First time I loaded up the game, I went and fought an orb weaver, tried to fight an orb weaver, and just got decimated. And the screams that the insects makes, the different noises that they made, uh, wolf spiders in general. When you first start um, coming across these insects, it was really terrifying, if I'm going to be honest. And they do have an arachnophobia mode, but in some cases that can actually be scarier than uh, just seeing the insects the way they are right now. So going along with the insects that we do have in the game, uh, one thing that for the character is the mutations themselves. So we've got, you can see here, I think 30, 33. Uh, and you can see they all range from using hand-to-hand -hand combat, using uh, axes, using hammers, spears, daggers, uh, bow and arrow, and everything like that. And then there are some that are uh, kind of case-specific, depending on the situation that you find yourself in. So those protection and areas where you need that. Um, and then you have some that provide you a bonus, like a a, uh, a person to come help you out, the corporate kickback, the uh, man serious stranger, stuff like that. So the mutations are really cool. I really like that aspect of... There's a small amount of customiz customization for your own character, depending on the situation that you find yourself in. And I really think that's one of the, the better aspects of the game, is being able to put on certain mutations depending on what you're doing. Especially the insect-specific ones. I do wish we got more insect-specific ones, and that they would be passive uh, upon the amount of insects that you actually killed. But overall, I think it's a really cool system. One thing that we can also talk about that I think is really original with this game is... Uh, Using the insects themselves to craft armor, weapons, and tools, and everything like that. You can see we have our mantis gear on right here and our mantis uh, scythe. Now this is a really interesting weapon, and uh, we can go ahead and take a look at all the different weapons and armor here. So mint mace crafted from mint pieces, uh, club of the mother demon from a boss fight. You have antlion. You have all the different weapons and armor that you can craft in the game. The majority of them use uh, insect resources, which is really cool. And they also kind of uh, have in line bonuses uh, that work with the type of insect that you're using. So bow stun would be similar to like a, a stinger from the bee. Um, we can look at the koi scale helmet. So fish can, uh, you know, have that ability. They're more ag agile overall. Marksman cap for the crow. Um, really cool. And uh, when you're first playing the game, I think it's a really awesome thing to... Uh, to jump into when you're first crafting your first set of armor and then kind of figuring out what does what in uh, different situations and it's a really really fun idea um for a, a survival game like i said this time this is a survival game but it kind of bases itself in a different way and i really enjoyed that aspect of the game another thing we can talk about is the story itself so 
like I said, built off of the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids movie franchise. But it also, uh, there's a story, and it's kind of dark for children, so it's really not a child's game. Because it talks about, and I don't want to give any spoilers here for people that are watching this and haven't seen it yet. But we don't, at the beginning of the game, you don't know why you're shrunken down. You just wake up in a case, and then you go from there. Over the course of time, with your exploring and talking to certain individuals, you'll find out uh, more and more about the story as to why you're in this backyard. So I really love the story aspect of the game. Late game, I think it was kind of rushed, and we've talked about that a little bit before. But overall, I think the story is one of the uh, strongest things that Grounded has to offer. Because you're not just going to save somebody. It's not like, oh, I need to escape this uh, island, or I need to uh, build to escape this area, or you know stuff like that. It's kind of a, a different revelation in terms of survival games. And the fact that they kind of did make it like a movie, and that's part of the reason why they're making the game into an animated series that's going to be uh, airing soon. So I really love the story aspect. Hopefully we get more of it, but who knows what happens in the future for this. Jumping in another one, you can see the environment that we have here. It literally looks like a backyard. We can bring up the map and show you the entire backyard here. Going from, you have the house and you have a shed over here. Now earlier on, earlier on in the game in early access, we didn't know whose backyard we were in. We didn't know what was going on with the story. We had bits and pieces here and there, but all we could do was theorize about why we were here. So the environment does a really good job of uh, making you feel like you are a shrunken down kid looking up at pieces of grass and seeing soda cans scattered all over the yard, uh, wood planks and all these insects and having hedge bushes and the shed and going under the shed and then up into the upper yard where there's the lawnmower, a coffee machine and all that kind of stuff. And these little ponds of water and stuff like that where if you're a normal human being this just looks like a disheveled backyard but when you're a kid shrunken down in this area it's going to be survival just like any other game just like any other aspect of survival you're put into an uncomfortable situation in an area that you don't know and expected to survive and kind of figure out what's going on so as you're playing through the course of the story and uh navigating the environment you do get quests to come across these different labs now the labs overall is a really cool idea because it does lend itself to the story as to why you're shrunken down. But you really don't know until you get these bits and pieces from the audio tapes, from the uh, the conversations with Burgle, and uh, just kind of figuring out, piecing things together as you approach them. Which I think is a really cool idea. It's not just the basic story of like, oh this is what's happening. You have to discover certain issues or certain uh, audio logs and everything like that that are going to give you information to tell you about what's going on and who's doing what, who's good, who's bad, who can you trust and everything because there are a lot of theory videos that were in early access about are these individuals good guys, are they bad guys, are they here to help us, are they here to harm us and then it just throws in the whole scientific aspect of what are we doing here and what are these labs for so obviously people were shrunken before we were because they have these labs and I think the majority of the labs are super cool to kind of delve into in like a dungeon form. Like the Black Ant Lab is a really good one. The Hedge Lab is a really good one. Um, and then you go from there. The Pond Lab is a really good one. There are some that are shorter than the others. But delving into the different labs and not knowing what you have to do or what uh, resources you're gonna need when you go in there, what kind of insects or enemies you're gonna come across, that uncertainty is kind of cool because then you can go in there in your first time and maybe you get through it and maybe you don't, but then if you don't, you understand what's going on for the next time. So what this is a big thing that uh, was discussed among the, the months and months of early access was trying to understand what enemies would be weak to and what they're resistant to. We never really had that up until uh, a while ago in one of the updates. It provided us with these cards to where it could give you, provide you the enemy weakness, or the insect rather, Insect weaknesses and uh, resistances, which you can see right here. Now they have these creature cards. You have gold cards. You can have regular cards. But it's going to give you the information. So instead of just crafting weapons that you think would work against insects, this can actually kind of curtail the grinding that you do. So you can actually go out there and just get the res resources that you're actually going to need. And then kind of figure out where to attack some of these insects. Because some of them do have weak points, as you can see right there from the... Black Soldier Ant, if you attack them in the eyes with a stabbing spicy weapon, you can actually do a lot more damage and stuff like that. So the addition of enemy weaknesses and uh, resistances can really help the new pl newer player out as well as the experienced player because maybe you haven't gone to an area in a while and you forgot what the uh, 
what the insects are weak or resistant to. So that's a really cool addition, and I really enjoyed that. One other thing that we get into, and this is a, a big thing for a lot of players, is the building aspect of the game. You can see here, this is my first base on this newer game. This was my second main game that I made. So I built a main base originally just down here in the lower yard, right near the uh, mysterious machine. The amount of building that you can do is really awesome. I love the fact that you can kind of build anything anywhere for the most part and kind of customize it to your own. And now with the uh, advent of base raids, you can actually make your base stronger uh, depending on what insects are attacking you. And then, then of course there's traps and everything like that. Although there's not as many traps as I would like, the traps do come in handy when you're defending yourself for the first time. When you're first playing the game and you hear that uh, klaxon go off and the insects start coming after you, you kind of get that feeling of adrenaline like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Are we going to get 100 insects come? Are they going to come destroy my base? And everything like that. And you can look at the uh, the amount of building um, options that you have here are pretty crazy. It's pretty awesome for a survival game to uh, be able to do this, especially one that's built into your own backyard where you're using the resources that are literally from the backyard. Ash cement, you know, clover roofs, you have uh, crow feather roofs, you're using crow feathers, stuff like that. Mushrooms that are mushrooms are growing all over the place. Really cool uh, options to build. Peblets, clay, everything that you're going to find in the backyard in the majority of the area it can be used to build a, uh, a base. And we've built plenty of bases. We've done a plenty of base build videos. Go check those out if you haven't already. Building this game is fun. And uh, I think that's one of the bigger aspects of the game for people to continue playing it. And last but not least, one of the more customizable options, although it's small and doesn't really do anything for the game, it's going to be the scabs. I call them scabs. They're called scabbies, but that's just what I call them. So across the map, across the backyard, you're going to find a lot of these different little bracelet uh, customizable options that you can pick and change the color. Basically it changes the uh, the UI of your, of your character. So you can have that. It's going to affect your health and uh, stamina down there as well. That's just one little cool touch that a lot of people talk about. And uh, it's always like, what's your favorite scabby? You know, is it the uh, Javamatic? Is it the Moldork? Is it Holodazzle? And a lot of them have become um, useful. And you can actually change it for your daytime one and then switch it over to a nighttime one. So there is a lot of customization. I think the game overall is really good and it provides characters a lot of freedom to do what they want. And it does branch out differently from uh, different survival games where you're based into a a realistic life situation which a lot of these are like the long dark the forest green hell and raft and stranded deep and everything where they put you in this realistic situation where you're just abandoned in a certain area and then you kind of have to piece together the uh the idea of what's going on where this one kind of jumps off the starting point with putting you as a kid shrunken down into an area where you have no idea what's going on you don't know why you're shrunk all you know how to do is uh start taking things and killing things and figuring out how you can uh, escape and then as the game unfolds you're gonna understand more of the story and see realize why you're uh, why you're a shrunken kid here so that's my 10 positive things about granted hopefully you guys are enjoying the game hopefully if you're if you haven't played the game yet this video can help you to look at all the great things about this game has to offer as opposed to some of the other uh, kind of bland uh, run-of-the-mill survival games that have been going out right uh, recently the game is full release right now. It is uh, in the holiday special right now. There's a holiday treat update right now that you can allows you to build a Christmas tree and get presents and stuff like that. We'll see what the future holds for Grounded, but right now those are my 10 positive things in the game, and hopefully you enjoy it. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Later. Hey, thanks again for watching, everybody. If you like that video, go ahead and check out one of these videos right here. Thanks. Bye.